Hey everyone, welcome to the show where we talk anything beer with a heavy emphasis on tasting the beer. My name is Jesse Nelson and as usual, I'm here with my good friend, business partner, and fellow craft beer fan, Adam Stacy. What is up? What's up, dude? How's it going? Did you clean some lines today, I saw? Yeah. This is Getting line. those clean. You gotta clean the lines, man. I spilled a little bit of beer today. It was did frustrating. You, <laughs> did you get, did you get yeah. it on yourself? No, but I got it all over the shop. Oh, man. Turned into a little bit of cleanup, but you know. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Cheers, Don't make way. that mistake again. <laughs> Cheers. No. Mm. Yeah, mm. we... Uh, Feels good to be drinking a beer now. It's yeah. been a long day. <laughs> yeah, dude, you, you look like you had a busy day today. <laughs> um, So you just clean lines at the linen shop today, and then yep. next week you do bark, it just fluctuate. Yep. Yep. Back and forth. Cool. Every two weeks. Okay. And then both. Keeping the babies clean. Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. it. Bringing mm-hmm. it in house. Mm-hmm. Bringing mm-hmm. it in house. You gotta do it. Uh, line cleaning is such a big deal, man. I see it. Uh, it's posted everywhere. We under, obviously understand the value in it, but I just see it posted all the time. Matter of fact, that reminds me, you gotta send me some photos of cool. uh, of the I line cleaning. I'll send you them again. Uh, I probably I'll I would, send you them. I wouldn't look. Just you probably did, but I wouldn't briefly looked. But okay. Send me some. Send me I'll some. Find, I'll dig them up. So we got a cool, uh, cool show for you guys today. Um, we've got mm-hmm. dude we've got jameson sitting here yeah we've got like we have whiskey sitting here which we i don't think we've done that on the show yet right now um uh, we're drinking uh what are we drinking what's in our glass in our glass is bail breaker top cutter the classic their uh their flagship ipa um it's gold i was just i was kind of laughing to myself while as i was reading it before it's like listed on the website as a traditional West Coast IPA. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder how long they've mm-hmm. had that description. Like, like when did they have to put that label on it versus mm-hmm. just calling it an IPA? Because, like, this beer has been around a while. I'm sure they didn't always call it that. But, yeah, nice and tasty. It's got kind of that everything you would want in a, you know, West Coast bitter. Got some of the pine, some this of the citrus, perfect. a little, little of everything in there. This is really, really Stacey. good. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll just say something real quick. It's 6.8% alcohol, in case anyone wants to know. 70 IBUs. Yeah. How much alcohol we're drinking today, in case you're keeping track. Um, so what did you what did you bring us here today, man? What are we What are we doing today? We're doing kind of a, shoot, I don't know what you not technically call it, but I want to call it like a vertical, but it's not, not quite right. But yeah. uh, we got kind of the progression of top cutter which then went into jameson barrels so we got some jameson barrel aged top cutter and then those barrels went back to jameson to have whiskey aged in the top cutter barrels so yeah loving it so we got the ipa the barrel aged ipa and then the whiskey aged in the ipa barrels Oh, this is like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, IPA barrels is kind of not really like a thing that I had ever heard of before. So, we'll, yeah. we'll kind of find out what, what if we can pick up some of those notes and stuff. That's that's the goal. See if we can find top cutter flavors in the in the whiskey. Well, we're definitely heading down the right path with the the, the beers that we're tasting. Yeah, right? to I'm get excited. to get to that point. It's gonna be a good one. Um, so I've actually been to the Jameson Distillery. And I visited Ireland uh, a couple of years ago. I'm, Very nice. I'm horrible with like times and stuff, dates and stuff. I think it was a couple of years ago with my wife. Uh, it was cool. Took a cool little tour. Uh, tasted some whiskey, obviously. And then I bought my dad a, um, a, 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 a whiskey that you can only get there at the distillery, which is kind of cool. It was basically just their Jameson aged in charred like oak barrels or something like that. Okay. And, okay. Um, so it has a little bit of a smoky flavor to it. And he only breaks it out for like special occasions and like has his name yeah. on it. Um, so it was a kind of a, kind of a cool experience. So <laughs> it's kind of neat to be drinking. Like Sharpie's a line where it is. Yeah, to he make sure nobody touches it. Nobody drinks it. You know, <laughs> he doesn't bring it out, dude. <laughs> Cause my family, they'll tie one on. If you bring, if you, I mean, you, you can't bring Gone it out. Tonight. Yeah. You can't bring it out unless, unless you're doing That's something awesome. special. That's fun. Yeah. Um, so been there. That's, which is kind of cool. And I'm excited you bought this. Where did you get this bottle of whiskey, my friend? Let's plug uh, someone. That one came from Linden Liquor. Cool. Yeah. Love Keeping it. Keeping it local. Shout out to Evan and, yeah. his, and the team. Jen. Cool. Well. Uh, so it was your birthday last week, right? It was. And yeah. uh, we asked on yeah. Facebook. 
We asked on Facebook. I'm pulling it up. Let me double check that the podcast didn't just cancel. Nope, we're good. And I <laughs> asked people on Facebook to to ask a question, like any questions they want. It's something they want to know about you. So basically, they just ask questions, like, "What would you like to know about Adam?" So this is what we have. We won't go through them all, so I can have some for other shows. We'll go through a couple though. The first one uh, from Cindy Lambert Morgan, uh, another uh, tap house owner, right? Isn't that her? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've got, I'll make sure I got the right person. And it says, happy birthday, Adam. If you could have just one beer, what would it be? Oof. I know. I wasn't actually prepared for these questions, so I'm kind of on the spot on this one. But, I like uh, that you went in blind. This makes me happy. Um, I don't know how... I could possibly choose one, but the one that comes to mind that I often find myself, you know, tying into that uh, that top tier category is Ruben's Crush. Oh, it's just so good. And it's a revolving beer, so it kind of always changes, but it's pretty similar every time. And it's just, it's a nice hazy IPA. Yeah. And I think I could drink it and not get burned out on the IPA thing. That's All one right. of those ones. I don't know. I like it. So that's what I'm going to go with for there right now. There you go. There you go. Next one down. That Ruben's is, Crash. It's always such a great beer. It really, really is. Okay, next question. Um, mm-hmm. I got it. It says, Adam, this is I random. Keep from, my beer. Yeah, I keep drinking. From <laughs> Daniel Jack. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're going to know this. It says, what hour of the day or night were you born at? Yeah. What's funny is I got a random text from my mom um, last week and it said like, you were born at 2.56 PM or something like that. I don't remember exactly. It was somewhere around there, Daniel, but uh, that's hilarious. I was like, okay, like, (laughs) thanks. You know, (laughs) like I had no idea why she was texting me this. I was like, cool. And it wasn't even on my birthday. It was like a couple days after my birthday. So I was just like, Oh, oh, oh. why are you telling me this mom? I was like, did you just remember that or something and uh she's like oh no it's uh somebody asked on facebook and so i was like ah she's yeah. keeping tabs on this beautiful that makes me happy to hear <laughs> yeah uh, so you're a morning morning baby is that what i know no 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 uh, uh afternoon. afternoon okay afternoon. afternoon uh ricky ruiz um he wrote would you be able to give up beer for a year no way. There's no way, dude. I, I mean, don't know why you... I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I could, but yeah. it's like pick your favorite foods and like be like, would mm-hmm. you, you know, why? No, why? No, no. Just, I'm not going to get rid of pizza for a year. I would get... Uh, you would. I would just miss out on so much enjoyment in life, you know? I thought this one was really good from Ray um, Chumley. How many different hats do you own? And how many way different overflow many. hats way do you too own? Many. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna I have that even, count. Yeah, I don't have. I, I don't have a clue, but it's a lot. It's yeah. too many. We have a lot of hats. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesse's got some hiding back there too. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I, although I do not, I haven't purchased very many of those either. So I don't have like a good point you know like a shoe buying problem or whatever. I just yeah. I acquire a lot of them through <laughs> random things yeah, and then. Yeah. You know, I, I wear through them, you know, fast too. Yeah. You got to get the, you know, the new ones when yeah. the new ones come out. You I, know? Think, I think when Overflow, when we first started, I mean, when we first opened, I think I had every hat and then now I've slowed down a little bit. I don't have every hat. Yeah. Anymore, I don't, but I, used I don't to, have every hat we've ever come out with either. Yeah. I used to have Probably every hat. Even half of them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I've slowed down a little bit there. So, uh, Ray, he doesn't quite know how many hats he has, but he quite has a, few, a lot of like hats. More than 20 or <laughs> probably like more than 30, probably. Yeah. But was it actually go digging? Um, Ray, uh, again, says 30 is nothing. How do you envision 40 being? That's deep. Ooh, the new 30, man. Yeah, I mean, that was easy. Yeah. We can skip It'll that be one. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how do you, yeah, how do you imagine now you'll be at 40, dude, 10 years from now? Um, well, I have an almost one year old, so that'll mean I'm going to be approaching the teenage years. So that'll be a, that's crazy fun time. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I'm going to drink a little bit more yeah. beer thinking about <laughs> having a teenager. Yeah. But, uh, oh man, dude, he's growing up so fast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where, uh, where you guys take overflow in the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll answer that after we, uh, uh, 
after we uh, grow the company based on how much beer you guys drink. <laughs> um, John Poe, uh, big supporter of Overflow. Hey, John. Uh, says, what's your all-time favorite beer? Just one. And what's your all-time? who's your all-time favorite brewer? Brewer is easy, I think. I think I'm just going to kind of stick with the same answer I gave on Cindy's and Rubens, I think, right? I, I've gone kind of in cycles, but I think right now I'm I'm pretty hot on Rubens oh, and cool. the crash beer. Cool. Is he your favorite brewery? I think so. At the, I, I think sorry, so at the brewer, current. Brewer. Sorry. Oh, we're talking like a person? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess Adam Robbins is my favorite right now then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we Cheers, also, Adam. This is great content, so I'm just going to keep going through these. I got a couple on Instagram as well. Let's pull them up. People really want to know about you, man. This is awesome. Oh, oh man. I'm wondering if I should save some of these for another show because this, like, this is Stefan Elmer, and he's like, hardest lessons learned during the life of overflow. Ooh. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's really deep. <laughs> hardest lessons learned. During the life of overflow, this is great. Let's keep doing this. Let's you want do me to this. Go into yeah, this let's one? keep doing this. Right, this is let great. Me think on this for just <laughs> yeah. a split second, yeah. and cut this pause out. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of lessons, man. What's your 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 you kind of your personal hardest lesson that you've learned? Ah, I, I think pro- it probably has to do with multiple circumstances involving um, people and working with people and hiring people and especially firing people yeah. and kind of all of the um, like really, really, really being aware of what the company needs before bringing people on that aren't needed or yeah. um, or you know, putting too much time into trying to make someone work and then having it not work out 100. some of those kind of things. So, um, you know, I think that's, that that's been some of the hardest stuff is, is having to go through some of those personnel. Yeah. Lessons. Yeah. HR. You're like chief heart officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was good. That was good. Uh, next one says what's, uh, Tyler Sledvik. What's up, Tyler? Uh, what's up, Tyler? Uh, he says, what's hardest about handling two businesses and a family Mm. by two businesses? He means two locations. Yeah. Um, Oh, a lot. (laughs) What's not right. It, uh, I think, I think actually one of the hardest things about the two locations, which is probably not an answer people would suspect is, um, trying to trying to um balance where or or prevent the customers from feeling favoritism towards one yeah. um, over the other and especially like being in like you know the beer buying side like it's funny cuz i hear from both places like the other place always gets the good beer and it's like i yeah, don't yeah that's hard the other place is saying that the other you guys get the good <laughs> yeah. is like i don't you know go to go to both is my answer i guess but uh <laughs> Yeah, so some of that is um, is tricky, and then uh, yeah, I mean, I got I, I kind of do the stay at home dad thing a lot, and yep. so it basically just another another time commitment, mm-hmm. um, and so it's really just kind of I don't know for me I, I've always enjoyed kind of that that balance of struggle of oh i don't know not over committing but taking on a lot and then not over stressing about it yeah um yeah, i was always the kid i was always the, the guy in school that would you know spend you know one hour writing a paper and get a b and be okay with that <laughs> versus like eight hours to get the a you know <laughs> so it's like i don't know it's just a time balance thing of like what's what's important right so yeah you definitely uh you have you're definitely a some multitasking going on with you like that's definitely not my game. Yeah, I don't you're, have you're much of a choice these yeah. days. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm sending texts and emails right now. Yeah, have you I noticed? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like <laughs> waiting for the my baby to pop out, and things are gonna really change. Um, let's see. Stefan Elmer again says, uh, "What would you do different in your 20s if you could go back?" Mm. That's a good one. 
Oh, um, I would have done more. Um, I would have done more like I would have taken advantage more of the complete lack of responsibility I had in my early twenties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, did, I did a few things, but not a lot. And then it's like, you just don't really realize that it's a pretty like profound freedom to not have like, like I'm thinking like yeah. when I was 20 or 21, I just like left and had no job and no rent or no payments and no car payments and like not, you know, just really I could just do whatever I wanted. I was in, yeah. a, I was not in a relationship, I, you know, like yeah. I was just, now there's, you know, good responsibilities, but house, car, business, yeah. I, you know, all those things where there, you just can't like uh, at the drop of a hat, take off and go somewhere <laughs> and do something. So I think I would have done more traveling and more just like spontaneous stuff. That's cool. All right, two more. These are these are both these are both a little heady. So, um, Christy Lynn says, "What's the one thing you do differently when starting Overflow? So, if you could start Overflow Taps all over again, what's one thing you do differently?" Not waste my time talking to banks. <laughs> 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 You spent a lot of time on that, yeah. man. <laughs> a lot of time building a business plan specifically for, <laughs> for the them. Banks. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's a good one. Not much else, to be honest. I I think I'm really uh, happy in hindsight, looking back at how yeah. it all went and how you know everything kind of yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's going bootstrapped. Well. Mm-hmm. Which and uh, there were so many lessons that came out of doing it that way versus if we. Oh man, did it a, a, a more a fast track way or something? So if you just had the hundred G's, yeah, <laughs> and just like, yeah, I think I think we had really had to be conscious of what we were doing and mm-hmm. aware of all aspects of the yeah. business. So yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, last one by uh, Instagram. I can't even pronounce that name, so we're gonna skip that. H J Atkinson. Uh, what is your why? What's your why, man? I like waking up in the morning happy. That's um, huge. And before this, I, w- I was doing some stuff where I wasn't. And most of my life, I always was. But there was a short period where I realized, like, this is not gonna, this is not gonna be good if yeah. I don't like waking up happy, you know. And so, love it. That's really what drives me. Is I like to do what i like to do yeah dude i love it and find a way to do it cheers cheers that could have been a show by itself dude well yeah. done that's awesome uh let's bottoms uh, up. yeah <laughs> yeah bottoms up and let's uh let's start this uh the rest of the show yeah let's, shall we yeah shall you you want to do the honors on I will. the uh, i will all right do you like um uh, do you like ice in your whiskey? Does it matter? Uh, are you asking if I want some for the show? Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm going to go neat on it. Cool. Just, Me uh, too. Me too. Not cool it down and try to get a little more flavor out of there. Good luck, dude. Don't spill it on your laptop. Look how full this thing is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got it. You're ridiculous. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Over. Look at that. That's a member growler you're, uh, you're holding there, man. Well, now we sell them. But. Sorry. No, dude, don't apologize. That's fine. That's great. All right. Yeah, these little seven fifties. We'll, we'll give time to settle. A yeah. wide mouth. I like them. Yeah. Really dig these things. So, I do have enough beer. So right off the bat, um, oh, a color comparison. See. Yeah, just I like got it a little bit more. Oh yeah, look at that. The top cutter is pretty light, um, kind of like golden, very clear. It almost looks like a pilsner compared to the other beer, yeah. honestly. And then uh, this one's definitely got some. More orange color to it, not quite as clear. Um, yeah, real nice white head on it. I'm actually impressed by the head on this. Beer. Yeah, so me it's too. Sticking around, nice. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, right off the nose, I can get some of that uh, mm-hmm. that oak and that whiskey aroma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I almost pick up some like gym botanicals. Me too. I'm waiting. I have. A, I was getting that too. I, I have a. There's still a little head in my. my I'm gonna wait for mine to come down just a skosh before I give an actual 
But I do that. I got that as well. Yeah, almost like botanicals Mm -hmm. from something. I don't know what that would be from, but. Yeah, so this beer was aged. I want, okay, this is good. I wondered about this. So uh, the reason you don't see barrel aged IPAs often um, is because typically you want to drink those fresh because of the hops. So makes sense. This was aged for only one month in Jameson barrels. So relatively short amount of time for a barrel aged beer. Um, but yeah, but still cool. It's 8.7%. So it picked up some alcohol. Um, the other one was what? 7%? Yeah. 6.8. I think 6.8. Yeah. yeah 6.8. Almost 2% up. Yeah. I do get the botanicals in there. Mm-hmm. Almost like, coconut or something too hey that's pretty good it's like almost kind of uh like uh like pina colada y to me yeah that's a good way to put it you get that i do get that as well it does taste kind of pina colada yeah like a pina colada ish kind Mm -hmm. of type flavor to it but not too not too bad though no Mm, I like this. This is pretty good. One month in the barrel. So the whiskey's like, pretty subtle. Yeah. But it's there. Yeah. What's the does it say for like tasting notes on this beer? Do you have that up at all? I'm kind of curious Let's now. I can find it. I definitely smell, I would say botanicals or maybe coconut or something like that. Can't find anything on there. That's all right. No worries if you can't pull it up. I might have. Some. Let me check my email real quick. I think I might have some in there. It's very easy drinking. Like this is going to be really easy to get down. I mean, yeah. this is pretty smooth. And I like it. It's uh, at eight point seven. It's um, you know a double IPA mm-hmm. alcohol volume. So it's nothing crazy. It's not like some of these barrel aged stouts where they're up in the teens and stuff, and you don't want to drink much of it. This is still a pretty good beer. Okay, I did find some actually. Cool. Oh, dude, we were right on. So here's the tasting notes I give. If an Irish car bomb cocktail was made with top cutter and Jameson, it would taste like this. Toasted coconut, orange, vanilla, pine, uh, medhul, meh, mehul dates, I don't know, dates. Dates. Lots of body and smooth, slightly sweet finish. 8.7%, 70 IBUs. That pretty much nails it. That's pretty much yeah. what I taste in this thing. Yeah, so the vanilla, yeah, that's probably that pina colada, yeah. you know, that I was getting in, in the orange. This is good. Yeah, this is really good, man. Really, really good. It's part of their um, their limited imagination station. It's that small batch program we've that's talked right. about before where they're doing test batches and stuff. I should have saved some of my questions actually for to spread them out throughout the show. So <laughs> drink and then you yeah, know, and then ask questions. Should have been drinking this. Yeah, know, know, next time, a good learning lesson. This well, is good. This is we really... could move into yeah, the. I mean, whiskey, we might as well move into the whiskey, and then we can you know Taste. start doing the drop shots yeah. and yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know just getting wild just with it, right? Crazy dude, um, you uh, like you're back in your twenties? Is that what we, we're talking about? We can't about? end this podcast till all of this is gone. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah. gotta crush the six pack, the growler, oh, the man, bottle. Oh man, so good. All right, the Jameson. Look at the branding on that. We were no- talking about that. How I'm gonna pull it pull up. Pull that up this. one more time. Oh yeah. Look, look about this distance. And just like you got the bail breaker cans. Yeah, that's, this ties in really nice. I like it. It's a good looking bottle. This branding is really really nice. Ooh. Look, 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 look. You know, it looks like whiskey. Looks like whiskey. Yep. We don't have Almost to get the same color as Top Cutter, actually. Yeah. The original. I like this. You're right. It is very much the color of the Top Cutter. Well, shall we? Cheers. Cheers. This is the second day in the row, we're tasting whiskey together. This is a rare thing <laughs> oh, for yeah, us, too. Yeah, we did yesterday. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That was good whiskey. But yesterday, yeah. what, what was the what's the name of the place again? Uh, probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't. At a uh, my homeland, Everson, Washington. There you go. Little plug. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for potential. Yeah. Projects down there. Yeah, that would be that's gonna be sweet. I got get some, them on the podcast. I got sometime. some video footage. Oh, the podcast will be great. And I did get some video footage. 
of that conversation you were having as well. Um, but yeah, their whiskey was really good. Single batch, uh, or single batch, single malt whiskey. And then, um, they had a gin that I really liked as well. Um, they're not the official sponsors of today's podcast, but this whiskey is really good. It's smooth. It is smooth. Are you picking up any, uh, like any similarities or flavors from the top cutter? I mean, I think I'm getting probably something that I would say would be a tiny bit more citrusy than I typically expect in a whiskey, but that's maybe about it. And I mean, barely, I don't know what it's going to say. Yeah, maybe a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like Let's it's see. hard to tell cause I'm tasting whiskey. But it's smooth. It's forty percent eighty proof. So this is the this is the the description that Bailbreaker gives on their website. Cool. On the nose, ooh, it's not nice. I break it down like that. Rich in hops with delicate floral notes. Well, might be a stretch. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like I mean, it's hard. Might to be like, a marketing <laughs> description. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to really smell whiskey too without just burning your brain off. <laughs> right. Although this one I actually don't yeah. mind. This is I can I can handle this one. So I'm not really picking up any hop aroma. I think it's hard just behind the alcohol. Taste citrus notes with some spices and vanilla. I definitely get a little bit of citrus in there. Um, I, I maybe we're missing something because even this bottle. I just look at this bottle. It says rich hops in the tasting notes. So like maybe there's I don't know what rich hops actually smells or tastes like. So. Maybe we're just missing that part of it, but I mean, I know I wouldn't. It's not like I would smell this or taste this and be like, "Oh, this is hot." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I wish it was. I wish it was like a really pronounced hot. That'd be kind of fun to try. Um, I'll read the back of this thing. It says, "I'm gonna just be smart, and we're just gonna cap this <laughs> thing because <laughs> you know, this bottle is very well branded." Um, so the back says, uh, "Jameson Irish whiskey." We've been distilling Jameson Irish whiskey since ni- or 1780, but we're always open to new ideas. So when we collaborated with Bell Breaker Brewing Company to create an IPA aged in our whiskey casks, it seemed only right to return the flavor. Uh-huh. Introducing a special edition Jameson cask mates from the cask seasoned with Bell Breaker's Top Cutter IPA, a delicious smooth whiskey with extra notes of crisp citrus, orchard fruits, and rich hops capturing the spirit of the neighborhoods of Seattle and the Yakima Valley. That's cool. Really, what, really cool. Which one's in Seattle? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't get it. I, I, I'm wondering. <laughs> the I, I, I wonder if the I wonder if <laughs> neighborhoods of Seattle, it's kind of weird. Like maybe yeah. they're hops. Yeah, or from, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. They did one. I know. I, I, I know what they're doing. They did one in with a brewery in Chicago, too. Oh, okay. So I think they're just kind of like picking two cities gotcha. and like. Bail breakers. Visit responsibility.org. Hmm. Jamesonwhiskey.com. Yeah, this... Uh, All right, I got one for you, man. All right, what do we got? While you're reading, try some of the whiskey Ooh. and then uh, follow it up with the the Ooh. top cutter. Okay. Am I, am I swallowing see- this whiskey? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I wasn't intentionally doing it. I just took like a small drink and then I took a drink of the, the top cutter afterwards and see if you could get... What I'm getting out of that. Mm. That's really good mix. Yeah, it hit me with a lot of citrus. Like, like it brought out a lot more citrus on the IPA than I was originally picking yeah, up. I'm impressed with that. Mm. This top cutter, man. I mean, this is this is a good beer. I mean, it's a really good beer. Yeah, this whiskey's good. Uh, Jameson Caskmates. I don't know how long it'll be around with this. This edition, I think it's but. just like a one-off thing. Like gotcha. so, it's probably you know, grab your bottles now if you want them, and when they're gone, they're probably gone. I'm gonna do the same they did one in the beer. past, but I'll do the whiskey and then do the uh, the barrel aged. Just wrecking the palate. Same same thing, actually. I think the yeah. citrus notes kind of kind of stand out. I believe. Um, what was I going to say about the beer? Oh yeah. So this beer 
Um, will we have this at both locations? No. Where will it be? Where, where, which location? That will be, be at? at Barkley Village. Um, we'll be releasing it during the Spirits Walk. Oh yeah, cool. Coming up uh, at the end of the month. Um, I think it's that's like the last Friday. Friday right? I don't know where it is. Twenty fifth. I'll, I'll pull it up real quick because I'm we're, I'm failing. I need Angela. I believe it's the twenty fifth. It is. Um, you're right. Jesse 25th. will fact check that. It is. Yep. And uh, next yeah, Friday. it's fun. It's uh, they're this year they're doing spirits, so it's not only whiskey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try to find a couple. You know, I like that man beers to go on with it. So we actually got another beer from them. I should have brought some, but this is a pretty heavy lineup yeah. already, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I didn't. But uh, to call you an Uber, it's called. It's part of the um, Jameson cocktail, cocktail mm-hmm. like with the ale understood. in there. You know, understood. Pun pun intended. Um, Irish Mule. So, ooh, this is another one out of the Imagination Station. It's a beer um, aged one month in Jameson whiskey. And they added, it doesn't say, so it must not be one of their flagships because it doesn't say what beer. But uh, I'll just read it. Whiskey barrel. So aged one month in Jameson whiskey barrels carried twice across the ocean from America to Ireland and then back to Washington State. Oh, so this must be this this barrel of Jameson oh. coming back. And then Bill Bricker did another beer in it. That's cool. And, and you have that beer Beer, for beer made beer with walk? lime peel and ginger root. Ooh. So this one's got ginger, lime, vanilla, and mild whiskey burn. It's supposed to be kind of like more of an Irish mule. I like this. This sounds great. And yes, we'll have both of those. Cool. At, at the, the Spirit at the walk. walk. Yeah. Cool. So the Spirit Walk is an event where you, you I think you pay a certain amount to get in, uh, and you go to, I think, 10 or more different businesses in the Barkley Village area in Bellingham, and you taste, uh, I think, it's supposed to be like one ounce pours of, of different types of no, spirits. Is that I think right? It's, I think it's like a smaller than a Oh, line. smaller than an ounce? Because like an ounce is like uh, almost a shot. Oh, yeah. So like, you're, you're going to have yeah, quite a few yeah. shots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was a good time last year. Last year it was uh, last year was just the whiskey walk. They had only whiskey. So this year, uh, I think they got a cis and deceased letter. They can't use whiskey walk. <laughs> so they use spirit walk and now they have a bunch, which works out great because now they have a bunch of different spirits and should be a really fun night. That's next Friday. Uh, the 25th at Barkley Village uh, sometime in the evening. Um, one thing I want to say just while it's on my mind about whiskey. So growing up, I was told never to put ice in my whiskey. Like it ruins the taste of whiskey, right? And I was in Ireland and the very first, and with like water as well. Don't put yeah. water or ice in your whiskey. And it's like I was in Ireland at this uh Chris and I had flown into Dublin and we had taken this road trip across and we were in this tiny little city. I mean, the population was probably like 50 in this, in this little, uh, Airbnb. And it went down to the only bar they had in the town and this just super like older, probably in his seventies, Irish dude sitting next to me at the bar. He orders whiskey and they serve it him, the whiskey in a glass, very similar to this one here, this overflow taps, like taste your glass. And she gives him a like almost like a, a tea kettle of water, like a glass tea kettle of water. And he just takes it, throws it in, throws more in, tastes it, throws more in. And it, it actually opens up the whiskey, the water does. Yeah, I've actually read that. Yeah, and so over there, over at the, at the distill, Jameson Distillery, I asked about ice. And they were like, over here in Ireland, people put ice in their whiskey all the time. It just opens it up. And like, so ever since I, that, ever since that experience, I've never, I've now I've now I'm not doing it now, but like I will put ice in my whiskey to kind of open up the flavors. Yeah. Um, and, uh, one little fun fact about that is if you, the reason why that they used to say not to put ice in your whiskey is because if the alcohol content isn't high enough and you put ice in your whiskey, it creates kind of this, it pulls like the proteins out and it kind of creates this like white haze. haze. Yeah. Yep. Um, but if the whiskey is strong enough in alcohol, I think it's, I forget there's, I mean, it's literally like, I don't know what it is, like 47.35 or something ridiculous like that. It won't do that. And so if it's good whiskey and you put ice in it, it won't fog up. Um, anyway, I just wanted Interesting. to see. Yeah. So if you ever thought about like, if you ever not put ice in your whiskey because you thought it wasn't the wrong thing to do, I mean, everyone in Ireland puts water or ice in their whiskey. So, I mean, good enough. Little tip, little fun tip. We should have been man. doing that. Open it up. I mean, this is pretty good, dude. 
I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and I want to go down and have a cigar. That's my <laughs> plan today. Well, dude, this has been a great show. We learned a little bit about you. Uh, yeah. And I didn't know that you were, you know, you were an afternoon baby. I didn't either until like last week <laughs> yeah. or this week. Uh, thanks for bringing this stuff in, man. This is uh, this has been a great selection of beers today, and this whiskey is uh, going to get drank for sure. Um, cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> it's going to stay in. It's going to stay in.